Yo, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to give you my opinion on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. I was in the Israeli army <clears throat> and um, I've made a couple videos about this and in those videos or on the comment section of those videos, I get a lot of comments where people are asking me to give my opinion about the conflict. And I've kind of stayed away from doing it because it's a very sensitive subject. And I don't think my opinion is very popular. Um, but, you know, I gotta make videos about something. So might as well touch on this subject and get to it eventually. And today is the day. So a little bit of background about where I'm coming from. Okay, when I was 22, I decided to move to Israel to join the Israeli army, which is kind of this like, generally in the United States, you're not allowed to join a foreign military and keep your citizenship. But there's this kind of like unspoken agreement where it's okay to do it with Israel, right? No, they, they don't really give you a problem about it because um, it's kind of like same team, you know what I mean? So anyway, I did it and I became a citizen and I joined the military. And when I had moved to Israel, I didn't know anything about the country. I, I knew like nothing, zero. I knew, I knew that that was like the country where Jew, you know, the Jewish country. And that was it. I had no idea what the country was like. I, I don't think I had met any Israelis even in my life. I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do it. I don't know, talk about why I did that later, but Anyway, that's what I decided to do. I had no idea about the country. I thought I would get there and people would be like riding camels and shit. I didn't know it was a modern, like, you know, first world place. But anyway, when I got there, I joined this program um, that helps get new immigrants into the military quickly, right? Because the bureaucracy in Israel is one of the worst in the world. And if you go there and you try to do everything on your own, you know, good luck, you don't speak the language and you're trying to navigate this like awful bureaucracy where nobody gives a shit about you. It's not easy. So anyway, I joined through this, you know, program, they fast tracked us. Uh, and part of the program was to do like three months of basically field trips around the country where you go to all of these historical sites and they teach you about, you know, Israeli history, Jewish history and all this stuff. And part of what they taught us was all of like the wars in Israel, right? And the way that they paint this picture is that paint Israel kind of, I don't wanna say as the victim, but as like this underdog that's getting ganged up on by all of the Arab countries around it. So it's this very kind of like heroic history of Israel. Um, let's just take that at face value for now, right? So what would what would eventually happen, because the, the group of people that I was with, right? It was maybe 30 of us. Some of them were more conservative and some of them were more liberal, right? You would think that people who go to Israel to join the army, they're all gonna be like super hardcore conservatives. And there were a lot of those there for sure, but we also had some liberals. And I didn't know anything about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, right? I basically got there and had no idea about anything. So the way that I understood it at the time is that um, Israel kind of just came in and, you know, so, so this is basically the history, right? Quick little history lesson. Uh, the state of Israel was created after World War II by the British, who basically like, they're like, okay, there's nothing, you know, nobody wants these Jews from, or I guess it was not necessarily that nobody wants them, but they just got like hardcore persecuted in Poland and Germany, um, really just, Pol or mainly Poland and Germany, and I guess Russia. Or no, not Russia. Uh, anyway, Poland and Germany, right? They got like heavily persecuted. Fucking Nazis killed a bunch of them. Um, we don't want to send them back there because it's not safe. So let's give them this like little spot of desert in Israel. They're like historic homeland. Um, and we'll just like create a country for them, right? Now at the time there were people living there, right? In what was called Palestine at the time. And um, they weren't happy about that, obviously. They're like, hey, wait a minute. Like you can't just put these random Jews here. It's not their country, this is, this is our country. British obviously didn't give a shit, put them there anyway. And the Jews were under a lot of pressure to build a country very quickly because they had nowhere to go, right? Their back was against the wall. They had to build this country in the middle of this like very hostile environment. Arabs in general are very like, I, I don't have a problem with Arabs. I like Arabs. I think they're very cool people. Very similar to Israelis, by the way. Um, but very territorial also, especially in the desert. Anyway, 
um, put them there and the there was there were a lot of conflicts right away and the the Jews won the conflicts basically and they won the conflicts and they took their they took over the land basically right they took over Jerusalem um, they took over you know in moderation Israel's not a big country it could have been much bigger if they had actually tried to acquire more land um, as a result of winning the conflicts but they kept it modest. They're like, nope, we just want this, we just want this, we just want this, and that's it. That's enough. So what ended up happening, right, the the like bird's eye view of this is that they were kind of placed in this spot of desert. They were attacked. They won the conflict, right? They were not the aggressors. It wasn't, you know, you could say it wasn't their fault. They won the conflict, and then they took over the land, right, as a, as a means of... Um, protecting their borders, let's just say, right? So you have this unique situation where like you're placed here and you're attacked and you win and you have to take over territory in order to protect your borders, right? So what happens is you have a lot of these people who are displaced and they don't have um, access to the same territory that they had before. And the way that it's split up right now is that you have Gaza and you have the West Bank. Now the problem with um, and anyway, the point is that over time, right, the territory began to shrink and Israel's began to expand. And the, like, as a means, like, because they needed it to be as safe as possible, they had to continually, like, box in this aggressive population and cut them off from the rest of the world because they were getting attacked all the time. And if you look at Israel's history, they get, they got the shit bombed out of them, you know, suicide bombings and stuff like that in the early 2000s um, by, the by the Palestinians. Um, obviously, you know, is like Sharon, Ariel Sharon, he killed a lot of people also, you know, I'm not saying like it's only one sided, but anyway, the point is this, is that in the beginning, I had the idea of like Israel's territory was kind of like ill gotten goods, right? And this is me just coming in as a completely like fresh observer, like I try to do. I try to look at everything with fresh eyes and not be influenced by any sort of biases. Um, and I saw this and I was like, well, you know, technically it's not really their land. They kind of just took over it. And now these Palestinians are suffering. They have no access to the outside world. You know, Israel keeps them under lockdown. They monitor all their cell phone conversations. Everything is monitored. And they do these um, missions into the West Bank on a regular basis. They go invade Gaza. There's like a war in Gaza every couple of years. It's kind of unfair for the Palestinians, right? And that's what I thought. That's, that was my initial reaction to this. And this is even though, you know, I'm, when, you're, when you're in the army, you get a little bit brainwashed, right? And you get this mentality of like, it's us versus them. And I've made another video about this in the past, but when I was in the army, even though I had this idea of like ill-gotten goods, I still, it, I wasn't like, that's not fair guys, let's protest. You know, it was like, okay, it's ill-gotten goods, but it's our side. So sorry, like you're on the wrong side. I don't know what to tell you. That was kind of my attitude. And then when I got out, I kind of saw it with, um, I was a little bit removed from the situation. I was no longer in the military. So I wasn't, um, I don't want to say I wasn't brainwashed anymore, but like I didn't see it in the same way because I was able to kind of like get a better view of the geopolitical scene and what is actually happening in that part of the world. Um, and what I really think now, because there, there have been plenty of opportunities for peace, but, but the, the issue now is that neither side actually wants peace. It does not benefit the people in power, the Israelis or the Palestinians for there to actually be peace. There, there is no peace. Nobody wants peace and there's not going to be any peace in the near future. And here's why. So, well, okay, and this is talking about Hamas specifically in Gaza, right? The West Bank is like slowly um, becoming more peaceful and getting annexed by Israel um, because the Palestinian Authority, who is the like the, the leaders basically in, um, in the West Bank, they, there's a lot of interaction with Israel in terms of the, um, what's it called? The Ministry of Defense. Like they run operations that are together all the time. And it's basically like Israel is kind of, they haven't necessarily installed them, but they support them as a way for them to keep their population under control. So there's a lot of cooperation there basically is the point. A lot of cooperation they let, you know, Israel will allow, um, you know, 
inhabitants of the West Bank. I can't really call them Palestinians because people are like, oh, there's no state of Palestine. Anyway, is Israel will allow uh, West Bank inhabitants to cross over into Israel to work. Um, they get like work permits for the day or for the week and they're allowed to come in and work, you know, whatever manual labor jobs or whatever Israelis don't want to do. Um, but Gaza, there's not really, there's no open border policy. There's no cooperation with Hamas who is in charge of Gaza, basically. Um, there's a lot less cooperation there and it's very hostile, right? Hamas is always like digging tunnels. And this is what I hear, right? I don't actually follow this anymore, but this is the like, this is the, this is just what I see periodically on the news, I guess, if I'm exposed to it. But anyway, Hamas is like digging tunnels to try and kidnap Israeli soldiers or Israeli citizens. They're shooting rockets into this little town called Sderot, which is this unfortunate town close to the border of Gaza, where they're shooting these like, kind of like advanced bottle rockets, where they just like light the fuse and it goes and hope they he'll kill somebody, hit something. They're not targeted at all, but occasionally one will like land on somebody's house and kill like a family. Um, so anyway, there's all this like hostility, right? And there's plenty of opportunities for peace, right? But what ends up happening is that, you know, the, the Gaza inhabitants will kind of get sick of Hamas because they'll do some fucked up shit or, you know, because they're very corrupt over there. Um, they, they do help the people a lot. They build roads, they provide schools, they provide like assistance for the people, but it's not, you know, they're also very poor. They're also encouraging this kind of blockade to keep them isolated because if they're no longer isolated, then they don't maintain control, right? That's, that's the whole idea with Hamas is that if they don't maintain the status quo, of Israel being the bad guy and like all these terrible things happening all the time and Israel invading and like the big bad Israeli soldiers coming in and shooting people or bombing them from, you know, helicopters or whatever, um, then they don't maintain the power because they present themselves as like the saviors of the people. Okay, so that's, they have no interest in stopping the conflict. And on the Israeli side, it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Anytime there's any sort of um, political like, something political that happens where the politicians want to kind of divert attention is they're they'll kind of like they'll say like oh Hamas like did this this and this we need to go in and do like a two-week operation on Gaza and it happens all the time you know and and the reason that this is happening on a regular basis I, and I don't know this I this is just me speculating but I believe it's because um, the United States has a very heavy interest in providing Israel with billions of dollars of weapons on a yearly basis, right? So basically what happens is if there are no conflicts around the world, if there is no conflict in Israel, then that's a billion dollars of weapons that are not going to get sold, right? But if there is a conflict, then those weapons are going to get sold. And we're talking weapons, we're talking intelligence equipment, we're talking training, we're talking like joint operations. We're talking, um, you know, United, like, I don't want to, there's no American bases in Israel, but there is a lot of like, not cross training, but the, the units will kind of train together. Um, so the conflict over there strengthens the relationship between Israel and the United States. Whereas if, for example, if let's just say there was peace in the Middle East tomorrow and Israel became friends with all of these Arab countries, like I guess the most hostile ones are Lebanon, you know, Syria, um, Iran, which isn't really Arab, but anyway, whatever, same, same general area. And uh, in Gaza, if all of a sudden everybody became friends, that's a lot of money that the United States is losing and a lot of um, like intelligence that they're also losing over a very uh, resource rich area. So, and on, on the other side, right? Iran is backing um, the Palestinians, right? Iran is helping them out. Or is it Hezbollah? I don't remember which one it is. I think it's Hezbollah. Well, they're all kind of on the same side, right? Hezbollah is helping um, Hamas and uh, what's it called? Um, Iran is helping Hezbollah. So they're all kind of on the same side. And who's helping Iran? Russia. So you have this kind of flow of weapons and money going into, um, you know, going from one side to the other. And you have the United States helping Israel, right? So you have this kind of like proxy war happening as a way for everybody to make money and stay in power. So, you know, if you, if you just look at the conflict from the perspective of like, oh, it's Israel versus, 
um, the Palestinians or Israel versus Hamas, you're not really seeing the big picture because you have to look at why this is happening and why this is continuing to happen. It would be very easy for them to say, okay, we declare peace. You know, it'd be very easy for Hamas to say, okay, we recognize Israel as a country and that's it. And we just want peace from now on and we want to open our borders and we want trade and we want like, you know, all of, we want fucking McDonald's. Like we want all this shit. We want the United States to help us out, right? They can easily become a modern country. They get tons of money from all kinds of places, but they keep it for themselves. You know, Gaza is a fucking shithole. Gaza is a giant, um, what's it called? A refugee camp. You know, the population density of Gaza is more than New York City, to give you an idea. And it's fucking tiny little strip of land. Um, but, you know, Hamas wants to keep them stressed out, basically, so that they can blame Israel for everything. And if they blame Israel for everything, they're kind of the ones who can step in as the saviors. <clears throat> and on Israel's side, you know, they want to keep this going so that they can test their new weapons, so that they can keep the military industrial complex going over there so that they have a reason to continue asking for aid from the United States. And, you know, that's basically it. So there's not a lot of incentive to actually stop the conflict is the point. And I don't see that changing anytime soon, really, because, you know, if you talk to most Israelis, what they'll say is that if Hamas wants peace tomorrow, no problem, let's do it, we want peace. You know, most, most Israeli, like I've heard Bibi say on many occasions, he's like, I'm ready to talk today about peace. He's like, tell them to call me, we can go, we can talk, we can have a meeting, like, let's do it. Um, but the other side just doesn't want it, you know? And, and Israel is not going to press them too hard to achieve it because, you know, even though it sucks, all this tension and like all this money they need to put into the military, there still are a lot of benefits to having a regional conflict there. Like, you know what I mean? All the money, basically. All right, so that is my opinion on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, it's just a fucking total shit show. And, you know, I don't see it stopping anytime soon. So it kind of is what it is. And it's one of those things that I just don't really feel like it's worth paying any attention to because it's not gonna stop anytime soon anyway because the powers that be don't want it to stop. So I just kind of ignore it really because what can you do, you know? What are you gonna go? You're gonna fucking start a campaign to, to make peace? They'll just fuck it up somehow, you know? You'll get Hillary. Anyway, that's my opinion about that. Let me know what you think, leave me a comment, peace.